So my name is Todd Vincent with sales at Almeco. Today we're going to go through the R1 series single plot combine. Um, this particular unit um, is a model we've had out for the last five to six years. And this unit is set up for multi-crop application. But today we have the newest floating standard auger head uh, that we have designed and built for small grains, dry beans, peas, soybeans, canola, um, and your small uh, seeded crops. This unit has both a rigid and a flexible uh, sickle itself and platform. The stainless steel uh, part that's here on the front here knows will actually float 20 degrees up or down. This has the soybean snouts on it. We have a longer snout. It's a wheat snout uh, with a winglet for uh, lodge material. Hydraulically driven reel. This is a hume reel where the tines always go down instead of pulling around. So you can actually go up to your next plot and have a tight alley. So 36 inches and below 24 inch alley. Uh, we can cut up to it without reversing and not collect that next plot. The reel itself, um, we've got uh, floating bats. Uh, we've got reel flaps across the unit itself. Um, those can be on or off. We also have crop lifters for the front um, for small grains. The fore and aft control is a manual control just with a pin. Um, we just loosen this up and we can move it, adjust it fore and aft. The lift is actually a hydraulically lift. And then we can also adjust the angle of the tines itself by loosening this fastener and doing a rotation. We can actually bring those tines up in different uh, uh, degrees of direction. We also have adjustment on the reel itself. We've got saddles that we can adjust that so every time it comes down into the saddle, it's positioned and it has a certain height. That's all adjustment um, throughout the header itself. The conveyor belt. On the header itself, this is a mini cleat lock. Also has air jets on the left and right side panels and on the front snouts, uh, 45 degrees back to this conveyor. So it's a very clean unit, uh, keeps your plots clean each time you're going through. Auger assembly, we do have uh, fingers that are rotating. We can also add the vine um, tabs on this if you're in a viney condition. We also have a beater bar in the back. It's bringing that material in and out to the center, making a nice uh, blanket of material that are feeding the rotor. The hume reel is really nice because it only combs, so it doesn't have the real fingers that come up and grab that next plot. So I can stop and provide a, a gap here and not have to be able to pick up those next plots across contaminants. So you can see how clean this header is. The functionality of it with the auger, the beater, the air jets, a very clean sample. Cleans out very well. So one function that's nice is that we've got a quick release reverse. So if you get into a situation to where you have material, maybe you got a rock or something that's coming up that you don't want to, you can actually just hit this red button quickly. And you can see it reverses both the feeder house, the auger, and basically out the front. I can untoggle my switch, it brings me back to the cutting mode. So that's a nice function that we have in the combine itself. We can also individually run in the screen itself here. I can go to the reverse mode and I can actually reverse individual functions throughout the header, the fan, and the rotor itself. So no large wrench anymore to unclog. You can just do it right here from the cab of the combo, which is a great safety feature and nice for the operator. Now the base combine itself, this is a modular design combine. It's built in a modular design. So header is built separately. Chassis is built. Grain tank is built. Engine assembly is built. Cabs built. Um, that's the way it goes through our line. This is all a laser. Uh, cut CAD drawn combine. So if you had a failure in a part, we can cut that exact same part and it's a perfect fit here. Two doors on both sides, glass on both sides, great visibility with the curved front end. All your electrical is right here inside the two door panel, which is nice to be sealed. It's all plug and play. Um, 
We make this panel separately with the cab. They bring the cab on, plug it in, uh, just like a commercial build. And have our plus one controllers. We have an extra function in here for a grinder. Um, if we add a grinder for uh, a transgenic material, we can add that too. We have our telematics here um, that we've got set up on the combine. Uh, depending on the model you get, um, the RX and R1 and R2 are all a stock feature. Tank itself, assembly, 40 bushel transfer auger, uh, screen top for small seeds and um, for safety so we don't have anybody in the grain tank. We have a, a camera in there also and also a sensor for um, the grain tank being full. This is a nice access door. We can open this up. You can see the transfer auger can be cleaned. We've opened all of our spouts here in the bottom um, of our auger flighting for our cross auger. That allows us to clean up very easily. We also have a sump here for our unload auger. That's also forward and reverse for clean out, which is a nice feature. This also has a feature for a uh, subsample, uh, a mini bulk sample. We can put a 50 pound sack here, actually just bring uh, the uh, handle up here and we can actually put grain right into a bag. Of course, this is in open mode. So if we backtrack this, very simple. Just pull this across, add your second, add your third, and lock it in place. All this is locked, it's sealed, brings your cross auger to your unload auger, um, and has that ability. Close our sump, add our pin. Like I said, this is an option. If you don't get this option, you'll have another door right here, accessibility. A door that would open. You can also put a roller mill grinder in this position. We've got accessibility on both sides for a quick release elbow. These just pop off, slide down, pull your elbow off. Um, you have the ability to uh, for cleanup. All of our hydraulic controls, all of our solenoid over hydraulic that feed the actual controller, um, the plus one controller uh, up in the cab. And these manifolds are built especially for Elmeco and has our test ports and our uh, watertight um, sealed connectors. Walking around the combine, we have four wheel drive, uh, proclaimed drives on both left and right side. We only make a four wheel drive, not a two wheel drive unit. Um, we've got actually mud scrapers on the front. Um, so if you're in muddy conditions, nice wide stance tires. Um, on the rear and the front. Fronts are 14, 9, 60 inch centers, and then the rears are also flotation. Engine access, we do have SNB uh, signs here for the back. In certain states, these have to be removed for um, transport. So if your particular state needs that, it is removable. We have accessibility up here with like, lots of different options depending on what wagons you're going into. So on the rear of the combine, we've got a straw chopper. As you can see, it's hydraulically driven. It just has a small belt drive right here um, that's driving the chopper itself. Um, it pins into place, or you can, you can see the pin here that locks it into place. Very simple, keeps it attached, um, gives us like, accessibility to the unit itself. Inside, we've got a deflector. If you don't get the chopper, this is what the back of the combine will look like. It'll just have a deflector here. Um, everything's on a rail system, so we can pull this out. This gives us accessibility to the interior of the combine. So the combine itself, you've got five individual concaves. They also slide out on a rail. You've got a two-speed uh, drive for the rotor itself. The rotor's over 100 inches long. It's made by Omeko. Um, this is 0 to 600, 600 to 1200 as far as speed goes. Um, all the concaves are marked with a laser number, and that's the distance between your rods. It's an all round rod, and we also have blanks available. So it's very easy to switch back and forth between crops. Single sieve instead of a dual sieve, with the rotor being powered out um, with the, um, the drive on the rotor, green stem material excellent machine for that because it's not sitting on that sieve wrapping around a straw or a straw puller it's actually being powered out the back um, this single sieve uh,
is quick release, pulls out. We have multiples adjustable, single, uh, short finger, long finger, and from basically four millimeter um, up to 32 millimeter uh, hole size. So we can fit pretty much any crop that you're looking for. Um, one thing that we see with the rotor, a uh, single sieve, the way it's powered out, we're getting about a 30% increase on throughput of uh, material through this, which is, um, of course, increasing your efficiency for the number of plots you can do throughout the day. Same elbow, quick release. We've got our airlock here. They can be quick released and pulled out the side. Um, we've got our uh, air delivery system here, hydraulically driven, front screen on it also. Uh, for intake. Um, it's a larger diameter tube uh, from what we used on our four inch. Um, and so this is set up with the airlock to run that high moisture, you know, 26 to 28 percent corn at 300 bushel. Um, that's what makes it a multi-crop machine. We can dial it down for small grains. We can dial it up um, for our higher moisture corn. So let's go through some of the cab features of the R1 and R series combine. So the cab is a, a nice roomy two-person cab. It has a, a cockpit control, so it's an air seat. Uh, all the dash controls and everything. You can pump this out, release it. We have lumbar support. We have a heat and cooled seat on this particular model. Um, up in the top of the cab, our air conditioning system, LED lights throughout the cab itself. Um, air conditioning with auto control. Um, we've got our cab fan for refresh. We've got our ladder in and out here, and we actually have electric mirrors on the right-hand side for transport um, that we can adjust. On the dash control, this particular model is set up with the Almeco seed specter for weight, moisture, and test weight. Um, we also have our mobile demand uh, computer with docking station. This can be exchanged with an H2 or Harvest Master system also. We have both options uh, for the customer. Um, you've got access another door here. You can actually open up, which is nice for communicating. You've got 12 volt plug. You've actually got your USBs here. Our serial number tag, if you had a Harvest Master, you'd actually have a serial number tag for the Harvest Master here too for any sort of diagnostics. On the dash control itself, you've got two functions here. This is a hydraulically driven, no electric clutches on this machine. So you don't have to worry about speed. You don't have to worry about shutting or turning it on or off at high or low speeds. Um, this basically runs everything from the rotor back. You just push the button, pull up. If you had trouble and you wanted to shut it down quickly, you just do a quick pop. From here forward, our header control is the second uh, controller itself. Once these functions are on and our throttle's at full position, we have a low, medium, and high push button throttle. Um, the high position is where we would actually run uh, the machine itself for harvesting, so all the, everything is set. Um, the controller itself is right here. This is a plus one controller. Uh, this has uh, an indicator here. You can actually use the buttons on the bottom to scroll through, or you can actually use this nice control knob. So you can see how I'm highlighting everything blue. If I highlight the item blue, I can bring the item up. This is, happens to be the rotor speed. I can actually bring it and I can adjust my rotor speed and then enter and then the machine will adjust to that speed itself. So as I'm going through here, I've got rotor, I've got concave, I've got two fans, a front and a rear fan. I've got my, um, uh, chopper speed and I'm at, at my feeder house speed itself. Also on the right hand side I've got the basic controls for the combine. I can go to page two. I can adjust at the top my air speed itself. I have one through five. My conveyor speed, my chopper speed, I'm sorry my reel speed. Then I can change my percentage of my air on my uh, air jets uh, for the header. My sickle uh, speed itself, and then my auger speed. So I have lots of adjustments that I can do here, uh, which is very handy. I can go to my reverse screen, and I can independently reverse functions depending on the header type that I have. I have my, my row crop or my corn head adjustment for my 
for my uh, stock rolls or my row crop belts. I've got my feeder belts I can do a reverse on. I have the fan in the back I can do a reverse on the engine or I can actually do the reverse on the rotor itself. I also have a reverse button here on the controller. If I want to just reverse the front of the header itself, well, I can just hold this red button and it actually reverse the functions of the header. So it's kind of a quick reverse and the controller itself. All the switches on the dash are programmable from Wameco. So this particular combine could be different than other combines. The top row is usually the same. Um, parking brake, unload auger in and out. I also have a forward and reverse auger, which is nice for cleaning. I have my seed tube up and down and my cyclone up and down. So there's no connecting manually of the cyclone when you get to the field. It's all done through um, these electric switches. This is the monitor that we have for the screens. Um, this is the stock setup where we have the cyclone, interior of the cyclone, the rear of the combine, and the grain tank. You can actually hold your finger here and actually highlight the, the screen itself and it'll blow it up to that particular uh, larger version. This is all color. Um, it's nice to have that ability. On this side, basically we've got, depending on the options that you got, um, there's a sliding door here. This gives us a dump hopper. This is 11 bushels uh, capacity. This particular combine, we can actually put uh, grain in here for uh, large bulk samples, or we can cook bags. And so this is set up for one or two person operation. We also have a feature that this has a manual control for opening for bagging. You can also put a foot switch on the driver's side. So if you can put the foot switch and then just turn and bag off of this. This is a bag spout for a bag. We also have an adapter spout for envelopes um, either way. Tag holder here. You've got accessibility here to your enclosure and the enclosure itself allows you to put, this would be the H2 Classic or an Elmeco hopper system. This particular model has a test weight hopper around a 14 pound uh, dual load cell test weight hopper that'll give you weight, moisture, and test weight. And then this function here allows me to flip back and forth to do a subsample, full bag sample, or send the sample to the grain tank transfer auger. You can see we've got real flaps on the reel itself. It's a nice sweeping motion. Cleans that front sickle. Cleans that front floating pan. With the auger itself, brings out all that material. So if I raise my header, you can see how it sweeps the header clean. You can see the conveyor belt, the beater bar. It's bringing all that mat material, making it a mat to go feed into the rotor itself. So now our seat is in the cyclone. You can see it in the cyclone itself. And so now what we'll do is we'll bring it down to the way hopper. There's our sample. You can see the sample itself looking through the screen. It's a nice clean sample. I'll bag this here. So one person operation. Bag the seat itself. And I can actually pull, put my tag on. I can actually drop the sample right in the 